Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, we're coming to the end of the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, this week's Torah portion is a double portion, Nitzavim and Vayelach. Vayelach is a very small portion. Often it's combined with Nitzavim. Uh, so I want to focus on uh, some messages from Nitzavim especially. This is the last um, address Moses is giving in the last day or two of his life before God uh, lets the uh, people into the promised land. And Moses, we know, is not going in. So in this case, Moses' time is running out. He's got this last address to the people as his life is coming to an end, and he feels this sense of urgency. Um, he tells everybody that um, they're all standing there before God and that they stand there equally, regardless of age, of gender, uh, and the kind of work that they do, that God makes the covenant with everybody equally, with everyone who is there and everyone who is not there meaning all of those souls who uh, perished in the past and all the souls that ultimately will be born um, of the Jewish people. Moses warns the people against uh, worshiping idols. That's kind of a constant theme throughout Moses' address. He condemns those people who worship idols and rem reminds the people not to turn away from God and from God's path that God has uh, given them through the Torah and the commandments. Um, and as bad as things get for the Jewish people, might get for them, no matter how much they sin and are punished and exiled, Moses reassures them that ultimately God will take them back. The word for teshuva, repentance, is used in this portion more than in any other place in the Torah. And it's not surprising that as we are about to enter into the High Holy Day season of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, when we focus on teshuva, repentance, this portion is read right before and the afternoon of Yom Kippur. This is also the Torah reading that the uh, affirmation uh, by Moses to the people that God indeed, no matter what they do or how they act, God will gladly take them back with their sincere repentance. It's never too late that the acts of teshuva, of repentance, of taking, acknowledging your guilt and taking responsibility and t um, paying back your fellow man whom you may have uh, injured, or transgressed against, and again, a, um, a, a real uh, plea to God for teshuva, for repentance and forgiveness, God will hear us, and God will grant us once again the opportunity to return. Um, this portion is really about, um, talks about what's important for the people to do now in the present, that they are ready to enter into the promised land. Um, it's, it's about the present and it's about the future. And this is perhaps one of the, this Torah portion in the, the whole book of Deuteronomy, its message is about what, what are we doing to procure the future? Um, we as Jews understand the importance of educating our children and the importance of sustaining our Jewish communities. I've harped on this lots of times um, that especially now given the pandemic, it's such an important uh, commitment for Jews to make to continue to involve themselves in synagogue life, to rejoin, to be part of the community. Uh, even the great Rabbi Hillel tells us, do not separate ourselves from the community. So as much as this portion, Moses talks to people about their ability to return from a state of transgression to wholeness, and God will take them back and give them another chance, this is the time of season where we must return to our synagogues as well. Um, the future of the Jewish people is at stake. The future of our children and their education is at stake. If we can't um, commit to sustaining a thriving Jewish community. This portion also helps us understand that the individual Jew can never think about him or herself. True, Moses condemns those who still worship idols uh, of the surrounding nations and the peoples that they've encountered and they will encounter as they go into the promised land, that's bad enough. But what Moses is really angry at is those who they think they can get away with the idol worshiping and that they can do whatever they want. Uh, in this way, Moses is being more than a little prophetic. To this day, there are Jews who think only of themselves and not about the implications of their actions uh, in the community. What we do has a domino effect within our community.
Again, I'll return back to the example. If we choose not to affiliate with the synagogue, the domino effect is synagogues will have difficult times staying afloat, staying in business, so to speak, in providing schools, preschools, religious schools for the education of our children. So this is more about thinking about our commitment and responsibility to one another. We uh, mention often the uh, beautiful uh, idea and concept and value that Kol Yisrael Aravim Zebazah, all Israel is responsible for one another. It's never more true than it is now. Just as our ancestors were making their way into a promised land that would fulfill them and their hopes, their dreams, and provide for them a safe harbor and a home, uh, a place where they could dwell in safety and in peace, we have to consider the fact that um, our homes, our dwelling places of our synagogues and our Jewish institutions are at this perilous point where if we are not responsible to each other, for one another, for this community, that those Jewish institutions can be in peril as well. Without Judaism, um, without our synagogues, without our Jewish institutions, um, it will be hard for us to continue to honor the commitment we have to the future of the Jewish people and to our children. So I pray in this new year that we all return to God. We uh, reflect upon our behavior and our actions in the past year, try to do better, return to God, but let us also return to our synagogues, to our people and to our community that we might bravely face still this pandemic and continue to be there as a Jewish community with open arms to embrace one another. I wish you Shabbat Shalom, and don't forget, a week from this Friday and Saturday is Rosh Hashanah. I hope you'll join us virtually for our live stream services. Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tova.